Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Robert and Mike from Medix Health. How are you both today? Terrific. Thank you very much. Great. Yourself? Good. I am fantastic, and we're going to hit the ground running here with the big question, which is many of the companies involved in telemedicine are currently seeing substantial rallies, and we're not really certain why Medix hasn't been the recipient of all of this goodwill. So I'm not sure which of the two of you is best suited to answer this question. I think, uh, Mike, you probably have a better insight into that, because quite honestly, I don't know why. We have a terrific product. We're rolling it out. It's a product for that age. Nobody should ever die from uh, skin cancer. Unfortunately, people still do. And we have uh, technology to solve that problem. I guess it's a failure on our part to get the message out appropriately um, because we are you know, driven with zeal and enthusiasm on the possibilities of uh, our technology and what it can bring to our societies. Mike, uh, what do you yeah, think? I, I think you've got a couple of things at play here. I think the telemedicine uh, phenomenon was really started out in the U.S. with Teladoc. That started to get a lot of traction. COVID, of course, gave that a super boost because people didn't want to leave their, you know, their hovels. They wanted to remain underground in bunkers and, and uh, but still be able to get medical care. So what you got, what you got to see with that, uh, Tracy, was this broad based ability to have a quick video with your doctor to a find out about where COVID testing stations were, if you had any other sort of normal maladies that people get from time to time, flu, earaches, that sort of thing. Um, Medix in the tele, is in the teledermatology space, so we're sort of a specialized version of telemedicine. And I think that's one of the reasons we haven't caught on yet. The other thing is Medix has been a little bit uh, long in terms of our new platform, and people have been waiting for us to become revenue, show us the money kind of model. And I think that, that'll be, uh, that'll be uh, something we'll speak about a little bit longer in this interview. So I think that's a little bit about it. But I think we're very close now um, to getting a point where we'll be able to show investors that we do have traction and where we're deeply scalable. And I think that's where you'll see the tide change for the company's uh, share price. In reviewing the markets over the years, of course, Mike and Robert, as you know, sometimes the good guys don't always get the attention that they deserve. I've been in numerous meetings with you, Mike, where you have turned around and asked someone um, uh, with regards to skin cancer, and you've pulled out your cyoscopy and actually had a discussion with them about this. Is that not correct? Oh, yeah. I think anybody who knows me or travels with me is terrified that I'm going to pull somebody over because I notice something abnormal on their skin that I want to talk to them about. So, yeah, I'm a little bit of a zealot that way. For that, I make no apologies. Um, I personally have um, have caught 16 melanomas since I've been on this journey. And um, so there's 16 people today that uh, I know are safe. And um, that gives me a lot of confidence in the technology and a lot of perseverance in terms of the goals. And of course, it's part of our job to get the message out to the Investor Intel audience and widen your investment audience with what Medix Health is up to. And speaking of that, many of our investors, myself included, like to invest in companies based on the CEOs and the jockeys that are leading the helm. And in this last several months, you've had some substantial changes in management Robert, you're now the executive chairman, and Mike, congratulations, you're now the president. Can you tell us how this might impact the, co the company moving forward? I, I think what uh, we saw is that there's a, a real need for all sort of uh, resources to be focused on the uh, rollout of uh, the derm, uh, derm Secure and Cyoscopy. And we have assembled, uh, first of all, Mike is a terrific leader and he's very, very uh, familiar and very deeply committed to this technology. So we have assembled a team under Mike, which are 100% focused on the rollout of uh, Derm Secure, so that the entire organization is focused on Derm Secure, cyoscopy, and ancillary technologies we can bring onto the Derm Secure platform. Yeah, I would add to that as well. I think the biggest part, from my point of view, um, is the focal points change dramatically. 
Robert and I work hand in glove. We know each other from the past very well. We get on quite well. And so Robert on the operational side has a deep background in turnarounds, a deep background in restructurings. Robert has a fairly extensive background and and anybody who clicks through, clicks through to his site will see that. From my perspective, this has been a, a you know a project of my heart and my uh, and, and 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 a passionate drive of mine. But you're only one person. The latest raise we did allowed us to complement the team. And of course, you always want to be able to hire people better, more talented than you, and just get out of the way and let them do their jobs. And with our recent additions, and we've got a few more about to announce here shortly, I think people are going to understand we're really being able to attract some pretty senior management team and on the sales side. And for that, I think that'll make some big differences in our revenue uh, forecast coming down the road here. Of course, ongoing flow of news releases and achieving mandates, as promised. Uh, let's just start, if you don't mind, with discussing when we might uh, anticipate revenue from the cyoscopy deals. Well, we're going to, uh, we don't do any forecasts and we don't do any uh, uh, forward looking statements uh, in that regard. But uh, we do have revenue picking up in, in this quarter and we have announced that we anticipate this uh, in the uh, fourth. Uh, quarter, we see uh, the sales which were announced to Brazil uh, that they're going to start taking off, as well as uh, uh, global initiatives we have in a number of European uh, countries, as well as uh, we have some traction uh, coming in Ontario and in Canada, which will start uh, driving revenue. We feel very bullish about that. And of course, it's my understanding, uh, and I was reading about this this morning, uh, you're focused on skin cancer because of your unique imaging capability. Uh, and is there a potential to actually expand this to additional platforms? Yeah, that's, that's a, okay, so that's a really good question. What's our differentiation? There's other telemedicine platforms out there. People have mobile phones. They have other uh, cameras. None of those image capture devices will actually capture what Medix's technology captures. Our ability to go two millimeters below the skin and catch a spectrophotometric views of the disorganization under the skin is really our hallmark differentiation. Dermatologists can read our technology. The numbers look like this right now. Other competing technologies is about a 40% rejection rate on the image quality. Dermatologists can assess the patient. When you're playing with something like skin cancer, you don't wanna be playing. Our technology, it does not have a rejection rate because every image is absolutely perfect. So the dermatologist, when they click on ours, knows that they're going to get, the patient's going to get a complete assessment. One of the things that came up was that they wanted additional image quality to be able to take distant imaging, um, which would include other things like psoriasis and acne and other skin maladies, more of what they call inflammatory skin uh, um, uh, issues. And so Medix has been working away on, a, on, on a, as I think everybody knows, another camera, and we're expecting to release information about that very shortly. And I think that'll make, it again, it just adds more to the dermatological services. It allows us to attract more dermatologists because we can, you know, we can deal with more maladies of the skin. And uh, again, of course, that increases to the recurring revenue model. So we're very, uh, very excited about being able to, uh, to bring that to the market shortly. Uh, we'll have more out on that very shortly. Uh, and just to add to that as well, we have a, a very highly qualified medical scientific advisory board. And in developing our uh, Derm Secure platform, there are lead-in questions and information about uh, the patient uh, which have been specifically designed by dermatologists, both for the skin cancer research and other alternative uh, conditions that Mike just uh, alluded to. So they are dermatologist designed questionnaires which form part of our telemedicine platform. So that therefore that the expert who gets it, the dermatologist can very quickly and time effectively assess uh, what that patient's condition, the surrounding area of the condition, and if it's a mole or lesion which is potentially cancerous, uh, add to that the cyoscopy imaging. To put that together, it's an extremely powerful and useful platform that can be deployed anywhere. 
We don't often get to uh, have a conversation with both the executive chairman and the president of one of the companies that we are currently covering. So I'm going to put you both on the spot here for a second, and I'm going to ask both of you to provide the number one reason why investors out there that are currently reviewing their portfolios and going, why Medix Health and not one of the many other planes on the tarmac out there? I'm going to start with you, Mike. What would you say the number one competitive advantage that Medix Health has presently and offers to potential new shareholders? Well, I think, I think it's a great question. If you look at our technology, Everybody is sitting back, I think, waiting for us to, to uh, come out of the woodwork with a fairly large um, scale, large scale install where we announce a large scale install. When people start to understand that we have built a deeply scalable technology that is the best in the world, I think we're going to start to get a lot different outlook from our shareholders. If I looked at it from a market capitalization pricing model, these other telemedicine companies are trading in the seven, eight hundred, nine hundred million dollar range, and we're in the twenty-five million dollar range. So, in terms of uh, you know disequilibrium of pricing, I would suggest for the risk associated with us, I think we're a fairly good bet right here comparatively to some of the other uh, telemedicine companies. And of course, Robert, you have just made a decision with your own professional career, which is substantial. I've enjoyed reviewing your uh, profile online. Can you tell me why you decided to become the executive chairman and what you deem the most competitive aspect for Medix Health to maybe a new shareholder out there? Well, I'll, I'll tell you that it, there's a, an emotional attachment as well. Uh, five people in my circle have had melanoma. And recently, in the last month, a dear friend of mine passed away uh, from complications from melanoma because 12 years ago, a lesion on his leg was burnt off by a practitioner. And it turned out to have been melanoma, which spread throughout his body. And he had a 12-year battle with uh, the complications and melanoma, uh, the complications which come from melanoma, and he finally passed away. So it isn't just a business uh, reason to, but there's there's a reason nobody should ever die from cancer, skin cancer, uh, and we have a technology that can solve that problem. And so there's an emotional reason. And there's also clearly belief that there's a strong business case and a strong business model that can be built on this, which will benefit all our shareholders. Did I answer your question? Yes, absolutely, Robert. Your answer, I think, clearly articulates why more of us should not only be taking a look at Medex Health, but actually reviewing information on skin cancer and skin cancer technology. Would both of you entertain the notion of coming back and joining us and doing an information only on skin cancer and more on Medix Health Technology? We'd be delighted to do that. Thank you, Absolutely. Tracy. Absolutely, Tracy, and, and thank you very much. Thank you both for joining us.